In this section's activity, we do two things with SOAP in Boomi. First, we set up Boomi as SOAP proxy for an external web service by creating an API by importing a public WSDL. And second, we modernize or convert that SOAP service to REST. So to get started here, I'm going to create a new folder, section 6, SOAP in Boomi. And then in that folder, I'm going to create a SOAP connection. So this will be a connection. And I'm going to name this SOAP Calculator. From the connector dropdown, I'll choose here at the bottom, Web Services SOAP Client. Now here in the SOAP Client, I'm going to add the WSDL URL along with the SOAP endpoint URL. Now this SOAP service has no security, so we can leave that set to none, but you can see some of the other types available. So no need for username or password. So we can save and close that connection. Now optionally, if you're Using SOAP UI, you could create a new project to confirm that the WSDL is valid and then generate the request profile. Now in the Section 6 folder, I'll create a new component for the API service and we'll call this SOAP in Boomi. Fill in some of the metadata that's published when we deploy. We'll say this is a demo of SOAP in Boomi using calculator service. And then for the base API path, we'll enter SOAP calc v1. Now I can import the endpoint, and we're going to use an external service URL to do that import. I'll enter the WSDL. Uh, again, no username password required because there is no authentication, but I do need to choose the location for the process. So I'll select that Section 6 folder. And now I'm prompted to choose the Web Services SOAP client connector. You want to select at least one operation. I'm going to bring in just add. All right, and we can see here in the Component Explorer that the Required process has been created with our web services server as the start shape. Here's our SOAP client, and then the operation has been created with the request and response profiles. So the process looks good. I can save and close the API component, and now it's time to deploy. So I've deployed the process. I only had one, but I deployed that along with the API service component. And we do have an optional step here. In certain situations, you may want to change the SOAP endpoint to send requests to Boomi, but keep the WSDL exactly as provided by the externally hosted SOAP service provider. So this will allow you to manage the external service through Boomi's API management capabilities. To use the WSDL from the external SOAP provider, we need to update the WSDL namespace to point to the namespace from the original service provider. We'll do that here in the API component. So under the SOAP tab, I'll expand the advanced settings. And here, instead of the default, I'm going to put in the WSDL from before. 
We want to set the version here to SOAP 1.1 and 1.2. And I will check this option to omit operation wrappers. So that way Boomi will send the request payload as it is to the WSDL service provider. That means that Boomi input and output wrappers, which are normally added, will not be added. Now the WSDL is in the course materials available on Boomi's LMS. We've called it Calculator WSDL. Once that's downloaded to your machine, we can choose that and upload the custom WSDL. And there it was uploaded successfully. And then you can see that we have checked use a custom WSDL. So I'll save and close, and then I can redeploy the API to publish the updates to the component. All right, so I've redeployed the API, and now I can test the API accessing that externally hosted WSDL. Now, if you opened a SOAP UI project, you could put the Boomi URL path in there. Or you can easily test this by entering the URL into a browser tab. With that, you'll be prompted to enter your username and password token from the Production Atoms shared web server settings. Now, one easy way to get the full URL path is to go to the API management section of the platform. Here on the landing page, Deployed APIs, I can scroll down to SOAP in Boomi, click View, SOAP, and here is the full WSDL URL path. So I'll copy that, paste it in a browser. Now I've already entered my credentials. So here we are seeing that the request and the WSDL are the same but the endpoint is hosted on Boomi. No Boomi input and output wrappers appear in the WSDL. The final thing we'll do here is to convert from SOAP to REST. So if I go back to the Build tab and open the API component, converting from SOAP to REST is very simple. I'll go to the SOAP tab, and then here from the Actions dropdown, select copy to rest. I get a note here in the bottom right that the copy was successful. Now I can open that endpoint here on the rest tab. I do want to make a couple of changes. So I'm going to edit endpoint. When that copy was made, the HTTP method comes in as a get, but I'm going to change that to post. Also going to do a little bit of update here to the resource path. We'll just make this all lowercase. Then I'm going to go to the general tab after I save that and update the base URL path just to make it more restful. We'll say V1 number. So I'll have to redeploy the API in order to publish these updates to the component, and then I can test the API through a client like Postman. So I've redeployed the API, and now I can enter the request in Postman. Now, once again, an easy way to get the full URL path is to Go to the API Management Deployed APIs view. Click View here. And now we have a REST tab, since there is the REST endpoint. And here's a link to the full URL path. So I've copied that. I'll enter that here in Postman. The body is XML, so I've entered that 
and my authorization has been added already, username and password from shared web server settings, so I can send the request. And here is my result. This video concludes now, but you can complete the steps as outlined in the activity guide from the LMS.